Hi, I think we can all agree that the last few years and especially the last few months and weeks were absolutely great in convincing everybody that it's not a question of whether, but when and how humanity is going to eventually wipe itself out of existence. In these trying times, it's imperative that we follow the timeless advice from Monty Python, specifically that we always look on the bright side of death. Right until we draw our terminal breath. Yeah. So, anyways. So, what you may ask is the bright side of the potential nuclear war. Well, you see, there is one. Until recently, much of post-apocalyptic science fiction had been kind of losing its zest and bite, as the looming threat of self-annihilation of the human race kind of surrendered its dominant place in our collective consciousness. Now, however, thanks to Mr. Putin, we can appreciate those works anew with full immersion, just as if we were to time travel to the heyday of the Cold War. I want to share a few of my favorite works in the genre. I'm gonna give you a novel, a movie and three short stories. All of them are gonna get you emotionally prepared to whatever is to come. And of course, by emotionally prepared, I mean that they're gonna get you so depressed that when bombs start falling in your background, it won't even seem like a big deal. That's my way of coping, I guess. If that's not yours, you should still watch the video so that you know which works to steer clear of until better times. First, we have On the Beach by Neville Shute. One of the most heartbreaking novels I've ever read, right next to 1984, but in a way somehow more personal. The book follows a group of people living in Australia. All radio contact with the Northern Hemisphere is lost. It's unclear if anything is left there after the nuclear war, if anyone survived, and most likely it seems nobody did. This, however, is not the main tragedy of the book. You see, a huge radioactive cloud is slowly moving towards Australia, towards our main characters. And it seems that there is nothing that they can do about it other than just try to come to terms with the situation. It is an amazing, heartbreaking, devastating read. The style and feeling of the book are a little unusual for science fiction and I would say in a good way. The best way I can describe it is that I think it's close to what would have happened if Fitzgerald decided to write a post-apocalyptic novel. Overall, it's top-tier literature, one of my recently discovered favorites, and I highly recommend it. One note of caution, though, if you're struggling with depression or are just generally overwhelmed and going through some tough times, this is definitely not a book for you right now. The movie recommendation. Dead Man's Letters. The movie was filmed in the Soviet Union as a cautionary tale. The main character is an ex-scientist existing amid the utter devastation left after a nuclear war. It is not an adventure or survival movie. It is not about clever ways to, I don't know, obtain food or fight mutants or anything like that. The most adventurous part of this movie is when the main character ignores a curfew and leaves his shelter to get to the black market because he wants to buy painkillers for his wife who is dying from radiation poisoning and suffers a lot. The through line of the movie are the short reflexive letters that the main character writes in his mind to his dead son. And yet the man in the dead man's letters refers to humanity overall and not to any specific person. It's a devastating, heart-wrenching movie about grief. The grief for children, for parents, for husbands and wives, and more than anything, the grief of humanity itself over its own death. Well, I tried to describe this movie as well as I could, but I'm not sure if I succeeded. It is not all as gloomy and dark as I made it sound. It is darker. As I mentioned, the movie was produced in the Soviet Union. The director was actually a student of Andrei Tarkovsky and he assisted him during the filming of The Stalker. So cinematically, the movie is a masterpiece. It's a shame that it's hard to find it in good quality, but the good thing is that even if you watch it in 480p, as I did, it still hits hard. And just to clarify, it's an obscure, almost like an art house movie, but I think if you're mostly familiar with the typical Western media, it's even more reason to give something strange and unusual like that a shot. Because otherwise, if we always watch the same stuff running from the same mill, 
How are we ever going to produce anything original, even an original thought, let alone a movie or a book? Short stories. I have three for you, and all by Philip K. Dick. He's a true master of describing those post-apocalyptic worlds. The first story is about this unexpected situation. So you live in a peaceful neighborhood, you have a wife and your kids go to school every day, but then one morning a bunch of soldiers burst into your house and start questioning you. How come you have kids here? You have food? You have a woman here? You are not enlisted? On top of that, from their words you seem to glean that a nuclear war has been going on for years. Well, that's how the story starts. I'll leave it at that. By the way, in case you want to buy one of those books, and if you want to support the channel, I'm gonna leave some affiliate links in the description. Second story, survey team. The Earth again becomes more or less uninhabitable because of a nuclear war, so humans decide to send a group of people to Mars to see if maybe we can move there. It does not go very well, but I'll leave it up to you to discover why. Planet for transients. This last story is the only one of my today's recommendations that has a little bit of an optimistic angle to it. Well, the Earth, however, is again completely devastated and radioactive, but this time it leads to an explosion of life. A lot of new species evolve from Homo sapiens, and some of those species are kind of cute. It is not clear, however, whether regular humans could find their place in this new world. And that's all I have for today. If you love science fiction and writing, consider joining our Discord. When the community grows large enough, I hope to organize some fun things like writing workshops and community-based short story competitions. And if you want this to happen sooner, you can support me on Patreon or Subscribestar. And by the way, right now you have a unique opportunity to become the first supporter, which I would of course deeply appreciate.